Hello, welcome back to Clep's Garage. I'm your host, Bruce, and today we're looking at a 1901 Curve Dash Oldsmobile. Yes, this isn't your father's Oldsmobile. This would be your great, great, great grandpappy's Oldsmobile. You might have noticed in the last episode, 61, we changed this tire, got it fixed, so now it's ready to start. And uh, today, hopefully, we can get this running. Last run was at least 10 years ago. So come along, let's see what it takes to get this jalopy going. Okay, back. Let's get started. Got my gloves on, changed my clothes because this thing gets oily and dirty and yeah, I'm going to do that. First thing we need to do um, is basically tear half the car apart to get to everything. So I'm going to take the seat off. I'll lay it over here. And we got to take the floorboard out. Or seat board, I guess. Take that out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's see here. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I've got to put the top up. Well, I can take this off. Let's see. I'll get the backboard off. Back deck board. And we'll take off the uh, other board. But first, I'm going to put this up. Uh, so I can see what I'm doing. Now I'll get the uh, camera off the uh, tripod here. I'm going to show you what some of this stuff does. Yes, this is the crank. And believe it or not, before I turn it over, i got to do some stuff. Um, you're supposed to be able to sit in this seat and start this car. <laughs> I've done it once, I think. But anyhow, uh, we'll attempt that today. Starting it from the seat. Interesting concept. All right, we'll get your first look at the uh, engine bay here, which you're sitting on. Get your first look at the whopping one-cylinder engine with a ginormous flywheel. And that, that you're looking at down there is actually the transmission. There's one, two, three different bands. Brake, reverse, first gear, and then high gear is down there. Anyhow, uh, First thing we're going to do is if you see this little oiler thing here, most cars pre-1915 have oilers to oil different parts of the motor or chassis. This one has this, which actually goes right down into the cylinder wall. And you, uh, this is a, what's known as a lost oiling system. Basically, you feed oil into it all the time, and then uh, it just blows it out wherever because there's no seals. So this is turned on from up out here. We're going to go ahead and turn this on because this is going to put some oil directly on the cylinder before I start turning it over and uh, looking at it. The next thing I'm going to do, there is a crankcase, however, it does hold some oil. There's no way of really checking it without taking this breather cover off. So the next thing I'm going to do is take this breather cover off and get in there and see if there's any oil in there at all, which I kind of doubt since it's been sitting around. And we'll pour some fresh oil in there just to, uh, to make it all happy. All right, so I got this loosened up. I'm going to pull this out of there. It's actually on a quick disconnect system, which is amazing. Hmm, okay, well, there you can see the connecting rod and the crank. I'm going to, where's that crank at? I'm going to turn this thing over. Looks like I need to oil this thing there. Well, yeah, come on around there. Believe it or not, there's actually still some oil down in there. I can't believe that. So probably the prudent thing to do would be to uh, drain that out and put some fresh in it. So that's what we'll do. So I've got that oiler on. And which way are we going here? This way. So here comes the pistoni, and you can see there's some oil down there already on the bottom of it. I'm going to leave that set right there so the oil gets on there good. Now I'm going to go down underneath there and drain this thing. Uh -huh. and, well, that actually opened. Of course, I don't really expect that to not be plugged up. Hmm. Well, maybe there isn't any oil in it. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, I, I see a drop. Oh, what drop? Oh, maybe two. Hmm, three. 
You know, one thing I just noticed doing this uh, film work here, and I don't think I've ever noticed this before, but uh, it's not going to drain anyhow. Look at this. Here's the very bottom of the crankcase, and the drain's clear up here. So I guess this is actually an oil level checker. I, uh, I guess I should have known that. Well, it has been a few years since I've messed with this thing. So we'll have to get down in there with a rag and suck that oil out of there. Won't that be fun? I can't even begin to tell you how much fun this is, stuffing paper towels down there and pulling them back out. I guess if a guy was restoring one of these, you could probably drill a hole in the bottom of the crankcase and put a drain in there. However, it's not period correct, and this one has been modified over the years, but um, I'm not going to modify it because I don't drive it enough. And I guess if I just keep putting new oil in it, run it, and splice the old oil out, it'll take care of itself. All right, I got that wiped out, and I'm going to put some oil down in there, which is easy peasy because all you do is just uh, grab a can of oil. Hey, look, I got high mileage oil, you know, because I don't have any idea how many miles is on this thing. And we'll just pour some down in there. Wouldn't that be pretty? Oh, you spilled some. Hmm. Oh, it's coming out already. Well, that don't take much. Wow. That don't hold much at all. I guess, uh, guess better shut the oil cock off. <laughs> that wasn't even, <laughs> that's not much. There again, that's why you uh, run this oiler all the time when the motor's running. Wow, that is not much oil at all. Where's my light? Light, a little light. Man, well, it didn't take very long to get that out of there. Oh, there's a little down in there. Eww, it looks green. Yummy. Well, I'm not eating it. Olds is. Ha! We'll see how it likes it. All right, so while we're here, I got the uh, cover plate back on, which actually has been converted to a, a crankcase breather. No, this isn't stock for you CDO guys, so I don't want to hear it in the comments. I know that. But it works a lot better with this on here. Um, so there's two grease cups, one here and one over here, that actually go down to the main bearings. So you get splash on the inside, but they wanted to make extra sure that there was grease on there and it actually would keep that from spewing out the sides so much. However, there's a little oil tube right down here that I need to oil. This oils the camshaft, which runs the, uh, the valves, of course. Oh, that'll be enough. Anyhow, uh, and then if you can see it down there, that thing there is actually your distributor, which is actually a make and break contact point. And I'll put a little oil on that just, just for fun. Got that oiled up. Let me come back here. We've got another grease cup here for the cam bearings. And back here, uh, if you can see this, this is the uh, valve arrangement. And it is um, on rollers, so we're going to put a little oil all over the place back here. And this car runs best if it's just uh, saturated in oil. There's actually a little hole right here for oil. And there's probably, oh, that's a roller bearing. I'll get oil that. And yes, this will make a mess on your floor. And yes, this car makes one hell of a mess when it's running. So, too bad. Sorry about your luck. Also, you know, get this. so this has a, um, a decompression release for starting this car, which you need. And this will actually um, put a little, actually, it, it's on the exhaust valve. It holds it open. So you can start this thing. So we want to make sure this thing's oiled up and working good. And we'll put some more back there. Can't get enough oil. Oh, that even sounds better. All right, then we'll put some more on the cam followers here. Cam loaves, don't want them to wear. Nope, 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 uh-uh. Might even put a little grease on there while I'm at it. All right, we'll move on to something else. All right, so I'm back up front. There's a lot more places I need to oil. One thing I need to oil this chain. Got an oil point here, here, all over in here, 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 here. And let's see, that's just on the shifting mechanisms and the crank, the crank uh, mechanism. This is how you crank the car over. Anyhow, before I get too carried away here, and yeah, I got carried away. And I've got the compression release open so you're not going to hear any compression. Mm, come on. All right, so the transmission, um, there's several oiling spots here. Mm, yeah. 
Well, there's another grease cup down there, right there, which is actually another main on the uh, the crankshaft actually comes clear out there. So you definitely want to grease that thing before you run it. And then down here, I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, you can see it. No? Yeah. Maybe? Where'd it go? Oh, well, it's over here. So this is one of the drums, the transmission. So I've already squirted some oil in there. That's one place you've got to uh, oil. Then there is... Uh, mm, yeah. There's another one on the inside of this drum. And then there is an oil spout somewhere. I don't know if I can find the dumb thing. There it is. Just come up. And you probably can't see it. So it is down down here. This actually rotates with the uh, transmission. Right there where my finger's at. So I need to get some oil in that one for sure. Oh, now I can see the other hole in, in this drum. There's an oil hole right there. Can you see that? Probably not. Yeah, it is. So we got to get all this stuff oiled up, greased up, before we're even ready to put gas and water to it. Isn't this fun? Okay, while well, I'm in here greasing everything up, I got uh, the grease in here. I just wanted to show this is more for my boys. <laughs> it is for YouTube, but this is a an open throwout bearing, so this needs to be well lubricated because it spins and it also moves on the shaft. And there's nothing to oil this thing up with, so you really can't have enough oil and grease on this. It's not going to make anything slip. It uh, all it does is throw in the high gear and out. This is really a crude and very early engine setup. Uh, 1901 02 had this open transmission. By 1904, unfortunately, the last year for the curved dash holes, this got turned into a, an enclosed transmission that run in oil. Far superior than what this setup is. I'm, I'm remembering now why I leave this car set. This is just, um, it's a lot of prep work and it's a lot of work to keep this thing running because you need to oil this thing while you're running it too. Uh, you can't just run this thing dry. Anyhow, this is uh, some of the stuff you got to do to this thing. I got everything greased and oiled and I'm going to grease and oil. So now I'm just going to hand crank it over. There's the compression. I have the compression open. Oh my God, it's still hard to crank over. So I'm just getting everything turning and moving. I'm getting it used to the fact that it's going to get started here in a minute. So everything's turning, doing what it's supposed to do. The valves are all doing their thing. Down there, of course, I can crank this and do that at the same time. Anyhow, um, yeah. So next thing, we're going to put water in it and gasoline battery and, oh, yeah, the coil. Coil goes back here. We're running a Model T coil because, well, they work better. So all you CDO guys, once again, I don't want to hear it. This is the way this one works. This is the way that it runs. Runs just fine. I know it's not all original. I know there's some things that's not right, but I know what they are, and I don't care. I don't know if I ever showed you guys about grease cups and how you do them. Uh, yeah, I just, I guess you assume you know it. I don't think I've ever showed this on my channel, but these grease cups are the way that you grease the rear axle. They don't run in oil. There's no oil running down through here continuously like the new cars do. So what you do is you get you some uh, grease. I like using high temp blue grease just because I just use it for everything. Anyhow, uh, you fill this little cup up. And if this hole's empty, you put some down in there too. And then all you do is put the little cap back on there and screw it down. So when you're doing this, this is forcing the grease down into this bearing. And when I do this, I usually like to move the car so that it's not all going in one place. Boy, that went down fast. I think we'll do this a couple more times because it uh, it didn't. I didn't feel it getting tight. Usually, when it gets you feel some resistance, you're getting tight. That means it's full, and I didn't really feel anything. So we'll just keep putting it on here. And I'm getting grumpy because it's lunchtime, and I think uh, I'm as soon as I get this done, I'm going to quit and go grab some lunch, then come back out here and put the water and the gas in it because. Uh, this is a pain in the butt to get this thing ready to go. But, you know, it's what you got to do. It's not a turnkey process. There's a reason why they made improvements on cars <laughs> all the time, every year. Still are. Uh, they make it so, you know, the simple person can get in and push a button and go. Not so much with this car. This is definitely not turnkey. However, after you, after you have it all up and running and oiled and greased, 
Uh, you don't have to do this quite as much work as I'm doing to it right now, but uh, this is stuff that you do have to do. So I'm going to lunch, and uh, we'll come back, get this thing running, I hope. Got back from lunch, finished greasing the rear axle. I think I've got everything oiled and greased that you need to oil and grease, and that's taken a couple of hours. So it's time to put water in this turkey and gas. So the water goes in here, and the gas goes in here. Let's see what this tank looks like. Oh, that's nice. That's pretty. It looks cleaner on the inside than it does on the outside. So I always drain these things, put them away for the winter, pickle them, as it's called, get all the fluids out of them, put formaldehyde in. Well, not really. But anyhow, uh, drain everything so it's can set for a long time. So shouldn't be too much of a problem here. I'm going to go ahead and put the water in, the, uh, the drain... The drain cocks are open. There should be two places water will start running out. I like to let it run out a little bit to get the dirt and debris out of there. And once that starts running out, then I'll close it off. Yeah, there it goes. So there's the first one. Now there's another one over here by the water pump. Let's see how long it takes to get there. That might take all day at this rate. There is a tiny radiator up underneath the floorboards of these things. The particular one that's on this isn't original. It's not big enough. Uh, it needs to be, it needs to have a bigger one on it. But uh, that's something I can address down the road. Whoopsie! I might have spilled a little bit. All right, so now I got Water coming out the water pump. I can shut that off, maybe. If I can get there from here. Didn't make this easy to get to. And I think I see water coming from somewhere that not supposed to be coming from, but... You'll have that on old cars. That's interesting. Well, we'll let that leak. It might quit. We'll probably have to tear the water pump apart and address that. It's slowing down. Now, you didn't see me do this, but I mixed in some two-cycle motor oil. And the reason why I do that is just to lubricate the valves. I'm going to put about a gallon or so in here. It's not like I'm going to California. Can you imagine driving this thing to California? Oh, my God. That would take, like, all summer. I wonder how many things you'd break. I think they did it back in the day. I'd, uh, I would have waited 10 years and got a more reliable car. And while we're doing that, we need to get the, uh, need to get the, um, what do you call this thing? Yeah, the coil. can't think what the heck it's called. We need to put a coil in it. I'm running a Model T coil and uh, run this in a lot of different cars because they're more reliable and they're easy to get repaired. And, uh, but we're going to test it. This is where it goes. We're going to test it and make sure it's going to work. So we're going to take you over and show you how we test a Model T coil. All right. So I've got my ammunition box out here. But uh, I keep coils in here because they fit really good. Which one is this? This is brush. This one must be the old. Well, we'll just uh, let's see which one's got more of a spark. So, first of all, I'm going to test it out in this machine here. Don't look like I need that. So, this is a actual, uh, yeah, this is an actual coil tester that would have been provided to the dealerships for Ford. So, it's sparking all the way around this ring. And then uh, this tells you how many amps it's drawing. So this one shows good. Let's try this one. Now 
that one's drawing just a little bit more than it needs to, but that's all right. I'm going to show you this one here. This is a, a little bit different uh, coil tester. This is actually the one I like to use just because it's quick and easy and tells me what I want to know. So this little box here is a handy dandy do it all thing. Right now it's shooting spark between there and it's showing me how many amps it's drawing. You can also test a spark plug with this thing. Let's see if I can get this so you can see it. So you can test fire a spark plug. There's also two slots here to test uh, your headlights, but that there's what's really neat. So that was my test coil. Let's use one of these and see what they're doing. It's drawing a little bit more amp than I want it to draw. You can kind of hear the difference in the sound of it too. definitely drawing too much and of course I probably went the wrong direction on that let me uh, get a tool here all right so I got my tools out this is one that I use uh, so really a lot of people think you adjust these by by this right here that's sort of true, but all that adjustment is to give you the point gap at about 30 thousandths. Uh, the rest of it's got to do with this spring tension and uh, this one here. I'm not going to go into this because I could do a whole video on how to adjust these. And we'll probably go see my, my buddy uh, that does this for a living. And we might even do a, an impromptu uh, commercial for him. So basically I want to get this right around 1.2 or 2 amp draw. This one's looking pretty good here. So I'll probably use this one. That looks like it ought to, it ought to work. Anyhow, so I've got a coil. I'll go put that in there, get a battery hooked up, and we'll see if we get any fire in the belly. Got the coil put in there. Now I'm going to turn the switch on. Uh, there's actually two positions on this switch. I don't remember which one's which, so we'll turn this over till we hear something buzz. Coming up on compression, maybe. Hmm. Okay, got a got a little uh, connection issue up here. All right. Well, I might have to work on that. All right, so I'm going to have to clean this up. So this has a little keyway, and uh, apparently it's corroded. I'm going to clean that up, and then I'm going to roll it over again and make sure I remember which way is retarded and which way is full advance, because I don't want this thing busting my arm. So I turned the gas on, and I'm going to see if we got any gas down here at the carburetor. Yeah, I know, this is a Model T carburetor. Somebody else put this on here. All right, we got gas. All right, got gas, got it turned on. I guess we'll get ready to try to start this thing. So this has a tiller steering, not a steering wheel, and, and you know your fancy new cars have tilt steering. This has tilt tiller. I thought about that back in the 1900s. Hmm, how about that? Anyhow, so uh, this is your emergency brake. This is your forward and reverse control. Backwards is reverse. Forwards is forwards. Clear up there is high. There's first. That's neutral. This little doodad is your spark advance and retard. And so I'm pretty sure that all the way back is retard. And that's what we want to check when we're starting this thing. So what I like to do is get it up on compression which is about right there, and then turn this on. Now I advance it. Okay, so that, yeah, so it won't spark unless it's on full advance. 
I'm going to go past. There's retard. That was quite a bit past. So there's retard. And that's off. All right, so I think we're ready to start it. I got my test battery in here. It's not usually the one I use, but it's going to work for today. All right, so this will be the first attempt. This ought to be good. This ought to be good. This is fun. Feel more choke. You know what they don't tell you about cranking it this way? This lever pokes you right in the ribs. Put it twice. Oh, oh, <laughs> it's trying. Don't choke it again. I'm left-handed. This this sucks. Without the compression release on. <laughs> That's more fun. As soon as I get it engaged.
Let's take you over here and show you this. We'll take it down the road and you can see it go uh yeah, top speed's about 30. We're not gonna go that fast. The dogs are chasing me.
There you go, easy peasy. That was all in real time, folks. be able to uh, slow it down enough that you can see the spokes stop. the sound of a good running engine. It's not how fast they can go, it's how slow you can make them run. Not bad for sitting around for 10 years. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Clubs Garage. Remember, drive them if you got them, even if they're 122 years old. Get them out, start them up, run them around.